Hi, I'm Rich Tannis. And I'm Rod Tannis. And we're the RC Twins. Yes, we are. I'm Rod Tannis from RC Twins, and if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and mash the bell so that uh, we can notify you when we have another video that comes out. And if you would, leave a comment because that really helps us and produce the kind of videos and things that you guys like. And today we're going to show you some more tips and tricks and some special tools on aluminum covering. And I showed you some on some on another video that I made with aluminum covering, but today I'm going to show some cooler stuff. How to fix some things and other things and more things to do. Okay, so we'll start out by showing, this is my C47 that you haven't seen yet, and this is weathering with real aluminum underneath. Now a friend of mine, Bill Rowley, came up with this idea of covering it with aluminum first and then painting it and scraping the paint off just like the real ones had. So if you want to make it look real, you got to do it like the real one. So aluminum's underneath, paint comes off of it, we put some flat epoxy over the top so it stays more oxidized looking and you get that weathered look. Now we'll show you how to do that. So here's the port side wing of this C47 and you can see that this is a matching a, a weathered uh, paint where this thing's been through some service during this and that was true for the period uh, before the invasion These planes have been everywhere and doing all kinds of things so transporting all kinds of things But for the invasion then they painted these new invasion stripes So this paint was new and I wanted to depict that contrast in this airplane especially Okay, here's some of the tape that I use I like this uh, Nashua if that's how you pronounce it, but I get it at Home Depot, and it's the extreme weather aluminum tape. Um, sometimes you get a roll that's got some lines in it or whatever, but that's just kind of comes to the territory. You know, they didn't make it for airplanes, but we're using it for that. So we'll take this tape, and so I've, I've made some plywood on here, okay, just a lay tape, and so on. And even though we're using this as a nice flat surface, Usually I like to fiberglass it, put epoxy on it, and sand it so it's a nice hard surface, but for demonstration purposes this plywood will work just fine. Okay, and so do some other materials. Okay, so we'll start it like this. Okay, and we can stick it down first part of the edge. And because this is just plywood, I'm not going to use Windex on it or anything. And we can just follow it. Okay, now you notice that you'll have some lines in it and other things like that. And a popsicle stick, the more you use it, the more you like it. Uh, seems to work really well for that, that you can rub some of these out if you put a little more pressure on the rounded end. And do it a couple different directions. You can see those lines just kind of rub right out of there. Okay, like that. Now, let's say you got it on there and you like it. Okay, it's, it's beautiful. Okay, now we'll take, you know, another piece and to get that look like, well, say this wing right here. If you come over here and take a look at the wing, you know, be able to see that I purposely overlapped it and a lot of the metal on wings in certain cases was overlapped. Sometimes not exactly the same as this, but it looks so cool. Nobody asks any questions. So, and you'll see uh, the line will stick up for me there and so on. And I will put all of this aluminum on. Sometimes they're tapered. And what I'll do is I'll go on Google and I'll Google panel lines for this airplane or panel line blueprints and things like that. And I will find the actual way that they put the metal panels on the airplane and we'll try to mimic that as much as we can and uh, you can be as picky as you want to be about that you know but that's uh, uh to get the look that you want 
And that's what's important is to find out what look do you really want. You want it to be exactly like it, a museum piece, or you just want it to be cool so that you know you'll feel good about what you've done. Um, I try to get this one a little bit more accurate for a C-47 because my father-in-law jumped out of one, invaded Normandy, and so I'm making the plane with the same numbers on it and the same serial number and the same chalk number on the door as much as I possibly can, and just because I want to honor him that way. Okay, so it's a little more important to me. But, you know, you can see how just the rivets come through, and you don't have to have all of them uniform and that kind of thing because they didn't come through the paint the same way either. And it's important to know that they put them in by hand when they did. So we'll take this aluminum, and if I were to want to match up the edge a little bit, but kind of come over it, you know, so I'm overlapping it. Okay. All right, so without getting too picky on it, you can take this popsicle stick and you can run it in line along this this edge and make that a little tighter to make a serious overlap you know you can take some of the marks out of it with the rounded end again okay but one of the neatest features if you wanted to have other panel lines I use this metal ruler here, you can get them at Hobby Lobby, is one of the places that you can get them. This one's made by Westcott, but it has a cork back to it. And since it has a cork back, it's not going to ruin your project. And you can bend around contours of wing surfaces. And like if I want to make this panel line or whatever, I can lay it over that surface or this surface here and be able to cut along it. And uh, so if I want another panel line on here, I can lay it, I can bump this up against it. Small pressure, I can run an X-Acto on there and I can have that. Now you'll notice I'm not worried about this line looking a little bit burly. If I want to lay the knife down a little bit more and I can have more of a fine line or I can put a couple of cross lines in it like this here okay now that's pretty cool and everything but let's say that you want more of a, a look where these flush rivets and not every plane had flush rivets but not a lot of people know which ones did and which ones didn't all I know is this works really good and it's an easy way to really class up the airplane and I showed you this part on another video but okay we're going to enhance it First, we're going to show you this one. I picked this size of rivet for my C-47. doesn't take much pressure to make that happen. But when you do this, it's kind of a tedious process. And for some areas that are more confined, you know, this is a good method. But then I built this thing. Yeah. Now, let's say I want to do an entire airplane. When you start to get good at it, you know, now it only takes minutes. And it actually took me about 25 minutes to do this entire fuselage, okay, with about 12,000 rivets all over it because you keep going faster and faster, okay? Now this wheel, okay, it's it's running, you know, about okay, two inches in diameter roughly. But what this thing is, is it's a fiberglass tool and it's for pushing fiberglass matting in into a mold or that kind of thing. But anywhere like fiberglass is a really good company, but there are some other places where you can buy these simple, most of them are semi-disposable tools. And it comes with a slot right in it, really. And I just put a couple more washers so it would run a little bit more true, you know. But um, then I took this tubing that you can find at Hobby Lobby or a lot of other places. K&S makes it. You can find them online. And this is a, a 93 thousandths tube. And I marked this out on the side of the wheel here and put it in my drill press. 
and then I drilled a hole into there and pushed pieces of that tubing and left them a little bit long. Okay, so I pushed them all into there. Uh, use a little drop of super glue if they're loose or whatever, and then they'll stay in there. And then I took my Dremel tool and kind of lightly chamfered the outside edge just to make it pointier right on the face so that it was able to, you know, embed in with less pressure. Okay, so you push all in. In order to get these all running the same, I took my disc grinder, laid it right on the side, laid this right here, and just spun this like this until they were all the same height. And that worked really nice. You know, there's probably other ways of doing it, but that worked good for me. And they don't have to be exactly all in exactly the same place, because again, they put them in by hand a lot of times in the real stuff. Okay, so by having this tool, okay, it really sped things up hundreds of hours is what it amounts to. So a piece like this, okay, once you get better at it, you can run rivet lines right next to each other all you want. Not that you would do that, but you can do it that fast. Going around contours and other things where it starts to get harder to handle, you put some in singly and it just makes everything go faster. Now, to cover this right here, I used, I painted this with a, a Rust-Oleum Camel paint. Uh, it's a forest green, which really mimicked the, the olive drab and gave a little darker sheen that I like. And uh, I painted it with that, with a coat of it, one coat, and then sanded it with a 800 wet paper. Um, before I painted it, and before you paint anything, you scuff up the surface, and if you get some of this gray scotch bright, okay, it, uh, it looks just like, like this. There's an Ace Hardware one, but there's 3M, and it's other ones that are scotch bright brands or whatever, but it's this material, and if you take it, and you can see how it will make it dull and have lines in the aluminum, and what this does, if I go each way until I'm finally making a circle out of it, it's cutting that aluminum, and now it makes more of a chalky type of appearance, which is what all of the aluminum ended up looking like. It wasn't polished. I mean, that takes a long time. These ones here can do the same thing. Scotch Bright forms into these grooves and the rivets and so on. Um, works nice. Now, the important thing to remember is after you do this, it makes the aluminum dirty. So you want to take a window cleaner, some of this blue stuff, okay? And if you cover the paper towel with it like that, and you see by giving it a quick wipe, it looks like that. <laughs> and you don't want that on there necessarily in between the, uh, the aluminum and the paint because this takes the advantage of making it stick really good now so now we'll paint all of that then we'll sand it with an 800 wet and to the where we like it to be um, on the c47 i painted this and then had high wear areas and so on that were on it so um, I, I sanded that through a little bit more. I wanted it to be more dramatic to give the impression of that they, they were hard-working piece of machinery, uh, hard-working airplanes. And that's what I really like about this airplane. It's rugged looking, it's strong looking, and it shows how it's built. All right, here's the C-47. This is the top of the wing, the second coat of epoxy, and that will make it a much smoother finish. I will sand it out to a 120 finish because I'm going to apply aluminum. If I was going to do paint, I would be 320 or more. And if it needed a little more epoxy, because that works better and more consistently if you're going to paint it. But aluminum doesn't matter quite as much, especially that I'm going to weather it to be war ready as we call it. So I covered all these wings in aluminum with the rivets and the whole nine yards. 
And now I put a coat of paint on them. This olive drab, kind of. And after that's good and dry, then we'll sand that through to get our weathered effect. Okay, so this is what it looks like for that. Sand it out 800 wet. You can watch the rivets come through. Not much effort. Looks like that. Okay, now here's some other ideas that you can do with aluminum covering that are pretty dumb cool. And this is something that I've been trying to do in different ways the best way, and this is the best way that I've come up with. Okay, um, on some models, especially in giant scale, but doesn't necessarily have to be, you will have a, what's called a corrugated aluminum. And instead of buying corrugated aluminum or those kind of things, uh, you can use a foam core wing or a balsa, whatever, and fiberglass it so that it's got a hard surface on it. And then use this, this Scotch 3M fine line tape right here, 1 16th fine line tape. Now this stuff sticks really good. Okay, I use this when I do panel lines and we'll put filler primer on it, but today we're gonna to do something a little different with it. Okay, I just take this same tape. Now I've put some other strips on here already, but it doesn't take that long and the spacing is not that critical. Uh, you can, after a while you get a lot better at it. Okay, now I'll take this same aluminum sheet and because it's aluminum and it's stretchy and all that kind of thing. You can get away with all sorts of things. Okay. So we'll put this on this way. And at first, it doesn't look like a whole lot. But now if we press a little harder. Okay. And we start to go sideways on it. Like this here. Okay, maybe you got a foam sanding block or that kind of thing. Like this here, you know, you can go right in this way. And voila, you've got corrugated aluminum and it's really strong and solid. And it actually does add strength to the wing and adds, you know, a really good look. And if you put a clear epoxy over that, it's going to be a lot more durable than anything with a hole underneath or space underneath of it because, you know, it's easy to dent aluminum, you know, but this has support underneath of it. It goes fast. It might seem like long when you're putting that tape on, but once you do and you put that over top of it, you're done. And you can do it crosswise or long ways. They did it crosswise on the wing this way on the real ones. It was formed that way. Um, we have some planes that have it on it, but that's the best method for doing that. Here's a different one. Just a, a shout out to you guys at, uh, at Flight Test. Um, Flight Test builds fantastic airplanes out of a uh, foam board. And this is a piece of foam board. And I put one onto it. Okay. And there's no reason why you guys can't take advantage of the same methods on that foam board. As you can see, it goes on there like nothing, right? And, you know, you can use this to make, you know, it's sticking it like that. We can put a panel line on there like this, or a couple of crossways ones, that sort of thing, you know. If you make yourself one of these handy rivet wheels, okay. Okay, you don't have to press hard. You can get this same look. 
you can do a whole airplane in just a few minutes instead of hundreds of hours. And quite frankly, I like the idea of telling people that I did spend hundreds of hours on it when I did, but I like this even better because I can get to building the next one. This giant P-51 Mustang wing. Okay, now it is a 10 foot wing and he can show a close up when he gets on the end down here. And you'll see that there is an oval piece right there. Now this oval piece right here can be, you know, covering this the way they covered bullet holes. They'll put a patch over it, put rivets around it, that kind of a thing. But every once in a while I would be doing a rivet and I get a soft spot or something like that or the, you know you get working too hard and I would just drive this through the wing and you got a hole. Well that's a good place for one of those patches that we're talking about <laughs> and that covers a multitude of sins in a big dumb hurry. Okay so having you know uniform or rounded edge patches like gas tank covers or any of those inspection plate covers um, it really classes up a, a wing. Um, and this wing would go to a P-51 Mustang fuselage like this one here. As you can see, I made a piece like this out of balsa. Then I covered it with epoxy, so it would make it hard. Covered it with the aluminum. And here's where I used the end of my popsicle stick to kind of expand the aluminum as I went down this radius and then allowed it to, to flow right onto here by rubbing the radius on the end of it. It stretches the aluminum and went right around the end, around both ends like that. And then I used these pieces here, thin wall stainless. It's actually out of a, a uh, roller, paint roller handle that I found that material and that way I could buy the whole dumb handle for 15 bucks instead of spending $120 on the stock. So you try to look for things like that. It lightweight, I took a torch to it to change the temper of the pipes on it because that's one of the coolest looking parts of the whole airplane. So by doing that, uh, I, I created this hole and stuck it into here and put it into the side of the fuselage and it'll be in both sides. But I just happened to have two of these things and here you can see it without the rivets on it. And I have, in design of the panel lines that, that uh, I more or less cut it to try to mimic that and soon it'll have rivets on it and when you know it uh, they made a big twin Mustang out of two Mustangs which is called an F-82 and I'm going to split that wing in the middle make a centerpiece and elongate you know the ends a little bit just because well that's what I do and we're going to have an F-82. It probably had about 154-inch wingspan. Okay? Somewhere in the future.